So we know how the op amp's out of control gain makes it technically useless on its own. But I have good news. In order to make an amplifier out of it, all you need is two resistors. The simplest and most common way you're going to see an op amp used as an amplifier is simply called the inverting amplifier. Just like the common emitter amplifier is extremely common, and easy to make, but it's inverting, so is this one. It seems like a lot of the best things in amplification are inverting, but that's not too difficult to deal with. So the op amp is a differential amplifier, but here we're using it for a single signal. We have an input signal, and we just want to make that signal bigger, and also flipped upside down. So if you take your op amp, and implied here is a positive and negative power supply, such as plus 5 volts and minus 5 volts, with 0 volts being the reference voltage, the circuit ground. I'm not going to draw the power every time we get it, but you're going to see me not bias the input signal, even though the op amp requires positive, or rather non-negative, inputs, because implied is I'm biasing it with the negative power source, so that's just assumed. So we have a voltage input, a signal that can be positive or negative, as long as it doesn't blow past the real voltages we give to our amplifier. We'll just call it V in. I am going to connect V in to the inverting input of the amplifier, not the non-inverting, not the positive, the negative, but we need a resistor. One resistor, voltage in through a resistor, and into the inverting input. The non-inverting, we're going to connect the circuit ground, the zero. You can see already why this ends up being inverting. Let's add one more resistor. Over here is the voltage out. We'll call it V out. Input, output. This is the amplified and inverted. Let's connect this resistor through like this. Welcome to the land of feedback. The tricky thing about using op amps is their insane gain actually works in our favor because of feedback. So think about a common emitter amplifier with a BJT. You select your gain by selecting the transistor. It has a certain beta profile, whatever. But the part, the physical construction of the part, determines its gain. Technically, so does the op amp, but the op amp has this crazy useless gain that's off the wall that we're using in other ways. Pretend the op amp is not determining the gain, right? The op amp just has high gain. That's all we know, that's all we care about. But with a common emitter amplifier, you choose your transistor, and there's your gain. You give it an input signal, input with gain equals output. So you're specifying your input and you're specifying your gain, and you get your output as a consequence of it. But how we use op amps is much trickier. We do not specify the input. We specify the gain and the output. This input is not the input that goes in here. This is our input signal, but this is not what the op amp sees because of the feedback. What we do is we choose these resistors. Let's call this R in and R out. We choose R in and R out. That gives us our gain. And not the op amp's gain, our gain. V in times the gain equals V out. If we call our gain A, is V out, I can't write today. Gain is V out divided by V in. That's our ratio. It has absolutely nothing to do with the op amp's gain. It has nothing to do with the op amp's input. We specify the gain and this signal, so this signal might be two, and the gain might be four, so the V out would be negative eight. Two times four is eight, inverting negative eight. We don't specify that. The op amp sets its own input. This is why I talked about the little mechanical gremlin in there. We tell the op amp what we want out of it, and it makes it happen. And that's why it's so stable and wonderful. It manages its own crazy gain with feedback. It manages those microvolts to the point where when we do the math in a second, this, we assume, the differential input is actually almost zero. We're getting two volts, we're getting eight volts, whatever out, but the actual differential input ends up being almost zero. It's really cool. So how does it accomplish this feat? I'm going to do the math at the end, so right now I'm just going to tell you the answer, and then we'll derive it at the end in case you don't want to watch that. For this arrangement, V out equals negative R out divided by R in times V in. Or 
To make it easier, this is our gain. The ratio of these resistors is a voltage divider, and the feedback works with the voltage divider to give us this gain and then negative because it flips it. So let's say our voltage in is three volts. Let's say this resistor is one K ohms, this resistor is 2k ohms. R out divided by R in, 2 divided by 1 is 2, negative 2. So it's negative 2 gain. I'll write it here, negative 2 gain. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So our voltage out is negative 6. The ideal, perfect, fictional, mathematical, operational amplifier has a couple properties. First, when we run it, the differential input is exactly 0. Perfect zero. Plus and minus are both zero. That's the trick. So mathematically, we say it's exactly zero. We say that it has infinite input impedance, which means neither of these inputs ever takes any current whatsoever. It has voltage, but it never actually accepts current mathematically. We say it has zero output impedance, which means it can put out infinite current. Whatever current we want out of it, it'll give it to us no matter what. With these assumptions, we do the math to get this, and then what actually happens is reality takes over. When we use these parts, what we get is very, very, very close. Remember, all of electronics is just windows, thresholds, tolerances. So we're not going to get minus 6. We're going to get minus 5.9999 in this case. But that's plenty close. The bigger the gain, the closer we get. So imagine the gain were 1. Imagine it didn't have this crazy gain. Imagine the gain were 1. In order to get minus 6 volts on the output, we'd have to put... Since we have zero on the positive, we have to put six volts on the negative. Gain of one, zero minus six is minus six, times one is minus six, and there's our output. If our gain were actually two, then we'd have three volts in, zero minus three is minus three, times two is minus six, and there's our output. But we have gains of 100,000, 200,000. So what we have is just a hair above zero. It's a couple microvolts. It's a couple dozen microvolts, maybe. It's very close to zero, but it's a teeny tiny bit above zero. So what you have is zero minus a sliver above zero equals a sliver below zero, minus 0 0.000001 or whatever. But then you've got this crazy gain, which multiplies this minus 0 0.00001, bam, all the way to minus six. So that's what's actually going on here. The input impedance is really big. It's not infinite, but it's really big. So we assume there's no current going in here. So this wire technically doesn't have current going through it. So what we have is a voltage across a resistor, across a resistor to a voltage. In other words, we have a voltage divider, a simple two resistor voltage divider. Three volts and minus six volts, but we have this voltage divider where this one is half the size of this one. This one's double the size of this one. So what you have is, imagine this. Let's say we have three volts to minus six volts. So let's say we have three boxes. So here is three, here is zero, here's minus three, here's minus six. So there's one here and there's two here. So R in has one of them, R out has two of them. You know voltage dividers, we've gone over this. So the voltage divider is getting zero out. We set the ratio by setting the resistor values. It doesn't matter what the actual values are, the ratio is what matters, this. So that when we have our input and our gained output, the voltage divider midpoint is zero. Remember, I said zero here and zero here. Now, like I said, it's not exactly zero. It's a tiny hair above zero, a tiny sliver above zero. So what's conceptually happening is it takes a teeny tiny slice of this output, shoves it into its input, and then the gain takes over using the power supply and puts out this huge voltage here. And it takes a tiny little sliver, shoves it in, gains it again, and it's in this cycle. That's how the feedback works. It gives you very close to minus six. It keeps a tiny bit for itself to keep feeding its own input. And that's why the more the gain, the better because it needs a smaller sliver to accomplish that. And the closer our approximations are, the more the gain, the smaller the sliver, the closer this actually is to zero, which means the better our approximation where we assume it's zero is, so the more accurate. So I've described to you the equilibrium point. Let me take away these numbers. Let's assume voltage in is positive. It's just positive. Let me use a different color. So voltage in is positive, which means voltage out is going to be negative, which means the differential input has to be negative. We've got zero minus a positive makes a negative. So we have zero 
and we have a sliver above zero makes a sliver below zero. So this is a tiny bit negative. Now let's say this is at equilibrium. It'll just sit there. We've got the correct in, out, and gain. Now let's say we just change the input voltage. Now V out is too low. V out maybe is supposed to be minus six, but it's minus seven. V out is too low. So imagine your voltage divider here is V in, and we have a box, and V out. And then the ratios of your resistors determines where the zero is. Let's say it's here. So that's the split point that the resistors put zero, so this C zero. But V out has become more negative. V in is positive, V out is too low, so V out is more negative than it should be. It's not here, it's over here. So if V out moved to the right and V in didn't, this line moved a little to the right too. So V out is actually over here, and this line moved a little bit to the right as well, because it's just the same percentages. So now, instead of having a slightly negative differential voltage, instead of having your slightly positive input creating a slightly negative differential, you have a negative. So instead of a slightly negative differential input, you have a large positive differential input, which means V out, which is currently negative, wants to be positive. So the operational amplifier starts making the output more positive. Minus seven, it starts heading towards minus six, where it's supposed to be. So as V out goes up, V out moves over and over and over more towards zero, which means this spot is moving more and more and more towards it being properly at zero. So as this gets closer and closer to the true output it should be, eventually this leads to the correct slightly positive input causing slightly negative differential input. And then it's happy, it's actually seeing not zero, but the sliver, and it stabilizes. If V out had been too high instead of too low, the opposite would have happened. V out would have been over here, instead of over there, which means this line would have been over here instead of there. We would have had two negative of a differential input, so it would have started turning it down, but then it would move V out over, which means move this over, and back to zero. That's how the equilibrium works. That's how it's essentially got a little gremlin in there with a knob that's turning until it's happy and getting its little sliver. Now let's say that Vn is negative. Vn is negative, which means zero minus a negative is a positive, so V out is positive. So this is receiving a sliver of a negative, which means the differential input is a sliver above zero, just a hair above zero. And the same thing happens. Let's say V out is too low. Well, in this case, V out is bigger than V in. So if V out is too low, V out's over here, which means this line is over here. So if V out is too low to properly counteract V in, then we have negative. See, because V in is negative. Zero minus a negative is a positive, which is supposed to be putting out a positive, a bigger positive. So it starts turning V out up. So V out moves closer to where it should be. This moves closer to where it should be and it stops. If V out were too high, that means V out is over here, which means the midpoint is over here, two positive. Instead of zero, it's positive. Zero minus a positive is a negative, so it's trying to put out a negative V out, but it's currently positive, so it starts turning it down. But as it turns it down, V out moves back to where it should be, the midpoint moves back towards zero, and when it reaches zero, it stops turning it. That's the equilibrium. Now, the more complex the operational amplifier configuration, the more complex this equilibrium self-balancing feedback becomes. So I'm not going to be explaining this in the future. It just gets too complicated, but the concept is there. All you need to understand to understand any operational amplifier setup is these plugs are going to be the same. For these setups, they're going to be zero. Very close, a sliver, but very close to zero. Some other setups will not have them zero, but they'll still be within a sliver of the same. So the differential input is always going to be the merest microvolt sliver away from zero. These voltages are going to be a hair away from being the same. And then just take my word for it that the feedback drives the circuit, drives the output, and thus the input to the proper sliver. It'll eventually settle. So just take my word for it. But that is the simple inverting amplifier with an op amp. Two resistors. You connect your circuit ground to the non-inverting input. You make a voltage divider using this ratio. You decide your gain using this ratio. Hook it up like this 
and it amplifies. Now, how do you choose the resistor values? Because this only tells you the ratio. Big is good, but not too big. 10k ohms, 8k ohms, 20k ohms, somewhere in there is what I see recommended. Probably don't want to go below 2k ohms. You're going to want to test, look some things up. But basically, high input impedance is good because, well, high, high input impedance is always good because you don't want to load the previous stage of whatever's going on. You don't want to draw a bunch of current from whatever's going on over there because you can have all kinds of parallel resistance effects and blah, blah, blah. So having large resistors, well, large resistors here is good because it makes the circuit more stable. It makes it easier to put in your overall circuit. If you make it too big, then you start having problems like it's slow to respond and there's a lot of noise. So you don't want to use 20 mega ohms. Stick to the low to mid k ohms, you'll probably be fine. So let's do some quick math. And I'm going to have to take this down so we can see what we're doing. But you saw the diagram. I'll use the same variable names. So what we actually have is a voltage divider. We have voltage in, then a resistor, which is R in, then our midpoint spot, our output feedback resistor, we'll call it R out, which leads to V out. This is a voltage divider. We say that the op amp has infinite input impedance, so there's no current coming out of here. So this entire thing, the current is I. Well, Ohm's law, if we have I, then if voltage equals current times resistance, current equals voltage divided by resistance. And we're saying the current is going this way, so V in, and this is zero volts, we're saying that's going to equilibrate to zero volts. So V in minus zero over R in. But it's the same current, so zero volts minus V out divided by R out. So we can simplify V in minus zero is just V in, and zero minus V out is negative V out. And we don't need this current anymore, we just know that's what it is. Well, our definition gain equals V out over V in. That's just what it is. So here's a V out, here's a V in. Let's multiply the negative over to the other side. Let's multiply this R out over times R out. Let's divide the V in over. V out divided by V in equals A. A equals negative R out divided by R in. This one was nice and easy. The rest won't be quite as easy, but I'll do my best to put them quite simply. But this is how you solve the equations of pretty much all of the differential amplifier, operational amplifier configurations I've seen so far. You just use voltage dividers and do a little algebra. But that was the easy derivation. So now you know what it is and how to use it. Let me just show you one in a breadboard real quick. I have the LM358N operational amplifier chip. This is my plus five, minus five volts breakout board. The two USB, I'll plug them in now. I will connect the positive five volts and the negative five volts to my chip to power the chip. The middle is my circuit ground. I'll put it there. Now I have a power supply I'll use as an input signal. Let me turn the current limit up and I'll leave it at zero for now. And the negative of the power supply I will connect to the circuit ground. I have two 10K resistors. 10K divided by 10K is one, so I'm going to get a gain of one. So no amplification. Input voltage is output voltage. So the signal positive into a 10K, that 10K out, into the inverting, but that resistor also into the next resistor, and that second resistor output, if I actually plug it in right, that second resistor output goes to the amplifier output. And then the non-inverting input of the amplifier, I connect to circuit ground. Now I will use my voltmeter to measure the output. Connect the negative of the voltmeter to circuit ground, the positive of the voltmeter to the output of the amplifier. Zero volts. Now you'll notice it's negative. Let's turn this up to 10 millivolts, or 100 millivolts, 0.1 volt. Now we're getting 0.10, but it's still negative. 20, 30, 40, how about a full amp? I mean volt, one volt. Nice and stable, oh, now it's 0.99. Now, I would like to point out that this is exhibiting what I was saying before. It's just a sliver off, but it's a consistent sliver. So that would be a calibration issue on here, but the point is it's consistent. If I go over to two volts, 1.99 to two, it's still just a little bit too high. It's a sliver close to zero. Let's go down to 92, so it's 920, 0.92, and it's going between 0.91 and 0.92 here. So I'm not gonna say 
this is actually showing that sliver that the amplifier is taking away because this is a cheap Chinese power supply. This is a cheap non-Chinese multimeter, but it may as well be a cheap Chinese multimeter because apparently Southwire is not a very good brand and I have some problems with this, but it's a cheap multimeter. There are large error bars in this, but it's convenient it's showing what it should be. So maybe it's right, but there's your amplifier. Let me hook up the power backwards. The signal, let me just flip these wires. So now, we're getting positive, and again, it's the correct sliver. It's taking away a sliver towards zero. If I change the voltage to 75, 0.74. If I change it to 59, 0.58. How about 0 0.41, 0 0.40? There you go. In fact, let me bring it down a little bit. See, if I bring it down, uh -huh. see, now it's 405, 406. 0.40546, but here it's 0 0.40, but you get the idea, inverting amplifier, because that's technically minus 0.41 input right now. Let me just turn everything off, and Bob's your uncle. So this was the long first video where I went into every little gritty detail. Future videos will have more complicated circuits, so it'll take longer to explain those circuits and the math behind them, but I'm going to skip all of the equilibrium discussions and slivers and so forth, so they'll still end up shorter. In the future, I'll just refer people back to this video if they want an explanation about how the equilibrium works. But for now, I'll be seeing you.